part of the presentation while I vote in the United States. Uh, now, an important lecture on the significant topic of the soul between religion and innovation, which will be delivered by Chef Fazil Furman. Chef Fazil Furman is the director of Al Flatow Project. He is a graduate of Al Azhar University and currently serving as Imam Al Khatib in London Central Mosque and Islamic Cultural Centre in Regent's Park. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, hamdan wa ijalan li wahib al-ni'am, salatan wa salaman ala man uthiya jwami'i al-kalim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, wa ala ala Ibrahim, innaka hamidun majid. After praising Allah and sending salam and salutations to the noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I testify that there is none worthy of worship, except Allah he is one and he has no partners. And I also testify that the noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger and slave of Allah the mighty. Respected Mashaykh, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, um, actually this subject that I have um, chosen to speak on it is very profound and deep and complex subject. I don't think I'm in a position to talk on this subject. But due to the immense confusion in society amongst Muslims, I was compelled to uh, address this subject, the subject of the tasawwuf between religion and innovation. Now, before I proceed, I'd like to apologize and ask forgiveness if I am going to offend anybody, because that won't be my intention. And I also ask forgiveness from Allah wa ta for any mistakes that may occur during the next few moments. Of course, um, there is a very common word uh, amongst Muslims and in the Noble Quran, in the Hadith and the in prophetic narrations, and that is known as a tazkiyah. Now, I'd like to ask a question from, from the audience, uh, to the audience. What do you know or what's your understanding on the word tazkiyah? What do you, or do you know the meaning of the word tazkiyah? Anybody here, please? Okay, let's just speak together. What is the meaning of the word tazkiyah? And have you heard of the word, word tazkiyah? Purification. 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 Or good of the heart, of the soul, yeah? Any other meaning? Tazkiyah. Hmm? Any other meaning of tazkiyah? Recommendation? You didn't even apply for university recently, and you get a tazkiyah. Reference, recommendation. That, that's also uh, one of the meanings of tazkiyah. But the tazkiyah that we're talking about here is the purification of the soul, cleansing one's heart. This is tazkiyah mentioned in the Noble Quran and mentioned by the Noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, when Allah wa ta'ala spoke about, spoke about the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his responsibilities, why he came to this world, he said in the noble Quran in Surah Al-Jum'ah, billahi min ash rajim I seek refuge with Allah to protect us from the evil of shaitan, the accursed. Then he said, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ That Allah the Almighty, he sent a messenger Amongst the people of, uh, of not knowledge, a rasul, what would be his responsibility? That he would recite the Quran, he would teach, the, he, would, he, would, he would recite the ayat of Allah Taala. And he would purify them, he would clean them. So one of the responsibilities of the noble messenger وسلم, was at tazkiyah, he was a kingdom. Mentioned in the noble Quran. And he would teach the book of Allah well, hikmah and wisdom, which obviously interpreted by the scholars of Islam as Sunnah of the Noble Prophet. So you see, Allah the Almighty is the Messenger وسلم, to do what? First of all, to recite the Quran, then to purify the souls, which is a key, 
purification of the soul mentioned in the middle of this verse in Surah Al-Jum'ah. And then we will learn the Kitab and the Hikmah, and if they were from the previous day, they were in the middle of the And then, this is Tazkiyah mentioned in the Noble Quran by Allah. But there is another word, also very common and well known amongst the Muslims in the Noble Quran and Sunnah, and that is Ihsan. Now, what do you understand by the word Ihsan? Please help me. What is Ihsan? Hmm. Ihsan? Anybody knows what Ihsan means? Kind. Yeah? Kind. Being kind. This is one of the meanings, yes. Excellence. Excellence is another meaning, yes. Being excellent in everything. That's also Ihsan. Any other meaning of Ihsan? It's the way you pray and why you watching people. You are watching people. Good, this is what we're looking for. But also Ihsan means to step down from your right and offer that right to your fellow brother and sister in society. That's also Ihsan, compromising flexibility. Uh, 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 you know, uh, giving your rights to others. This is also an ihsan. But Allah, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he spoke about ihsan in the hadith in the prophetic narrations. So there is a famous hadith known as the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam. Are you aware of the hadith of Jibreel? When Jibreel amin alayhi salam, he came and he had a conversation with the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in that hadith, he asked a few questions to the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen Allah. to the name of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right. So when he came and he asked to the messenger of Allah, O oh, messenger of Allah, what's iman? What is faith? So, messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, antukmina billah, that you believe in Allah, wa malaikati in his angels, wa kitabi in his books. And then to the end of the uh, sentence. And then he said, what is Islam? So obviously Islam said, أَنْ تَعْبُدَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشِرْتَ بِهِ شَيْئًا That you worship Allah and you do not associate any partnership with Allah. You do not ascribe any partnership with Allah. That's Islam. And at the end he asked, what is Ihsan? So then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, أَنْ تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَى فَإِنَّهُ يَرَى Meaning that you must or you should worship Allah as if you can see him. As if you can see him. And if you couldn't see him, if you couldn't feel like seeing him, then you need to feel that Allah is watching you at all times. Ibadah in its highest level. That Allah is watching you at all times. Muraqaba at da'ima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is monitoring you. Imagine you're working in a place and your manager is watching. How would you do your responsibility? How would you uh, uh, carry out your responsibilities? You'll be doing this in your best capacity, your best level. According to your best capacity. Why? The minute is watching. So, this is an ihsan meaning, you must worship Allah as if you can see Him, and if you couldn't see Him, then Allah is watching you. Now, here, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us that Islam, when we talk about Islam, there's three different degrees. Number one, you're a Muslim. And that's just you believe in Allah and His Messenger, you don't reject anything from Quran and Sunnah, you become Muslim. Then the second level is mu'min, that you become a true believer, you practice, you apply, whatever you learn, you, uh, you implement in your life, this is believer, mu'min. And the last degree is al-ihsan, that you become a muhsin, and that's the stage when you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all time. You are in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment. That's al-ihsan. Now, is there any dis disagreement? Is there any difference of opinions? Amongst the scholars of Islam, from all lines and circles, whether the scholars Mashaykh of Salafiyyah, or the Mashaykh of Sufiyyah, or the Mashaykh of Dogandiyyah, or the Mashaykh of Ibn Baraliviyyah, is there a difference of opinions in these two things? Tazkiyah and Al-Ihsan? I don't think any educated Muslim would disagree with these two points. Everybody agrees. Tazkiyah to Nafs and Al-Ihsan. Why? Because they're mentioned directly in the Noble Quran, in the uh, language of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam. There is no other difference of opinions. And nobody disagree with Tazkiyah and Ihsan. So we said purification of soul and Ihsan is excellence in Ibadah and worship. Now, when we talk about the worship of Muslims, there are two major types of worship. Right? Two major types of worship. Number one, Al A'mal al Zahira. The outward worship. What are these outward worship? Give me some examples, please. Outward worship. A'mal al-zahira. Like people can see external. 
I lay back feet. Salah. Yes. What else? So when you pray, people can see. Um, yes, when you give charity in public, people can see. Uh, hajj. When you perform the ritual of Hajj, people can see. When you uh, are going to jihad, people can see that you are really fighting in the path of Allah. When you go and do da'wah in public, people can see you doing da'wah. These are outward ibadah, outward worship. When you go and do, uh, uh, for example, teaching, when you teach uh, students and teaching uh, Islam and teaching generally, is also outward, so people can see. So this is called an ibadah of Zahira. That's the things that can be seen, the worship can be viewed, the worship can be seen, the outward worship. But then you have some of some other worships that are known as the inward worship. A'mal al batina What are they? Give me some examples, please. A'mal al batina The inward worship. Fasting, yes. Oh, yes, fasting is one of the actually inward worship because people can't see if you're fasting. Unless they know. But yes, it can be counted as inward. Anything else? Vicar, hmm? yes, if you're doing uh, uh, quietly. But then part of the Ba'atina, or the uh, inward worship, number one is sincerity. We know we have to pray. But what is the, where is the place of or where is the place of niyyah in, in, in a person's uh, body? So the scholars of Islam say, Mahal bin al qalb. So heart and soul is the place of the niyyah, intention. I don't know why you're praying. I don't know why you're, you're fighting the path of Allah. Whether you're really sincerely fighting or you're uh, fighting so that you can, you can be called a, a very brave individual or a, or a brave person or, or, or a hero. I don't know why you are going out in the path of Allah to be da'wah or to be called that you know, you're a da'i. I don't know why you're going to hajj. To be called a hajji, like a, a person who, who performs hajj and hajj, or you've gone to really uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obey his commandments. So sincerity, we can't see. But the place of sincerity is qalb, the, the heart. And that's something inward. Then stuff like patience is also considered as inward because sometimes, you know, patience needs a lot of courage, a lot of like, um, uh, it needs lots of tolerance to be patient. So patience is a great reward. And uh, sometimes we don't even think that we can get real reward from patience. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the name of Fasadruna, Ajrahum Bilayr Hisab, the verily, the patience rewards are unlimited. The reward of patience is unlimited. There's a limit to it. But we don't realize the patience is great reward. Again, inward. Tawakkul, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of the time we can't see our trust or your trust in Allah. How you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your tawakkul, again, unseen. Generosity, as-sakha, al-karam. Again, something that I can't see, but if you give in public, then I can see you are generous. But, you know, that quality, that khisma, that sifat of generosity and karam, Again, highly praised and highly uh, rewarding Islam. Again, considered as inward. Modesty, al haya Modesty. <coughs> and Prophet Sallallahu said, al haya is part of iman Modesty is part of the faith. Again, these qualities are inward. <coughs> how do I acquire the humbleness? at Like to be humble, no matter how high you go, high, how, how rich you become, how educated and how knowledgeable you become, but you're still humble. Whoever becomes humbles himself for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates his status, his degrees. Then you've got stuff like asset, uh, 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 asceticism, like avoiding the dunya for the sake of akhir. So asceticism is zul. Zul is also highly rewarding. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he could have everything in this world, but he deliberately avoided many, many things. He didn't want to be rich. That's asceticism. Al-Azul for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, not fully going against the worldly pleasure and against the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the stuff that we can enjoy in this world. Not fully against, but you prefer akhirah over the dunya. This is called um, asceticism. And then for sure in salah, like, you know, being very focused in salah and uh, standing humbly in front of Allah the Almighty. These are the stuff that we can't see, but they are known as a'mal al batina the inward worship, or inward action. Then we have also some of the disease that people can't see in our hearts. For example, the arrogance cannot be seen, but people might be very arrogant, and arrogance is, is, is very, it's a dangerous thing. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person who has a small grain of arrogance in his heart will not enter into Jannah. 
you will not even smell Jannah if he has arrogance. People uh, might have some sort of a sore thumb. People might have uh, evil thoughts, negative thoughts about some other people. And that again, known as or considered as amrad uh, al or the part of the sickness of the heart or the disease of the heart. But we cannot see them much unless people are doing in public and then we can observe. But originally, the, the place of these things are al in the qalb, in the soul of the people. So generally, just to give an example, the worships are categorized into two. A'mal vahir, a'mal ba'atina, outward, inward. Is there any difference of opinions amongst the scholars of Islam with regards to this, what I mentioned? According to my understanding, according to my understanding, I have not seen any scholar have difference or has difference of opinions regarding a'mal, that the action that I mentioned, the vahira and ba'atina, outward and inward, everybody agrees. <laughs> Everyone agrees that that needs to be treated. Uh, the, the disease of the heart must be treated. Agreed by all scholars of all lines, all circles, all medayim, and all masla. Right. Now, where do you find in the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam with regards to the sound heart? So, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he um, talks about uh, the heart and the condition of the heart in the hadith. Uh, mentioned in the book of Imam al Bukhari, Imam Muslim, rahimahullah. Um, the hadith is on the authority of Imam ibn Bashir, radiallahu anhu. Qala Samaq Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mubha. That verily or be aware there is a, a piece of flesh in the body, human body. Ala wa inna fil jasadi mubha. Ida saluhat saluh al jasadu kun. Ida piece of flesh is sound and healthy, the whole entire body is sound and healthy. And if that piece of flesh, the soul or the qalb or heart is corrupt, then the whole entire body is corrupt. And then it's and that is none other than the heart of a soul of a human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the number of Quran about the sound heart. There will be a day when no children and need no children, no wealth will benefit a human being, a believer, a person. Except an individual, a person who comes with a very sound heart, a good heart, a healthy heart to Allah Taala. So the importance of a sound heart. Okay, agreed by all the scholars of all lines and, and all uh, sort of circles without any disagreements with uh, important the sound heart. Now, so the content of Tazkiyah or the purification of the soul or excelling the inner dimension, betterment of the character, later in the later era, so so far we're talking about the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Sahaba radiallahu anhu, and the early stage of Islam regarding tazkiyah, suluk, the uh, you know uh, the akhlaq and ruhaniyah, tarbiyah, the spirituality and um, training one's soul. We're talking about so far about the early stage, but this knowledge later developed into something called a tasawuf. Have you heard of the name Tasawuf, brothers? I'm sure from the post you've heard. But before, have you ever heard of the name Tasawuf? Anybody heard the name Tasawuf? Please help me. Apart from those who scholars. <laughs> those who have studied Sheikh Ashraf and Imam Asad, inshallah, yeah. Uh, apart from the scholars, do you know, uh, I mean, if you can help me with the word Tasawuf. Yes, okay. So people are more aware of Sufi or Sufism in English. But tasawuf, where does the word tasawuf come from? So, is that from suf, like some scholars they say, probably it's from the suf, the wool, like what I'm wearing now, it's like a wool. So the early spiritual figures used to wear the suf, and that's how they're known as the people of suf or the wool. Or, they come from a sufa, from the people of sufa, you know, the sahaba radiallahu anhum, who used to sit right next to the prophets, prophet's house, and they used to memorize the hadith, and part of the sufa was seen that Hurair radiallahu anhum, is it coming from the Sufa? Or is it coming from the Greek word known as Sufiya, which means the Hikmah, the, the, the wisdom? Difference of opinions among the scholars of Islam. Some are saying that the word uh, Tasawwuf 
came from uh, uh, the purification safa by cleansing the heart. The safa is the saf, saf like the Urdu and when you say the saf, so it's cleansing. Uh, some are saying it comes from the Greek word, the Sophia, which means the, um, the, the hikmah, the wisdom. Others are saying it comes from the soul, the wool. Soul means wool. Um, these are the difference of opinions among the scholars. But Imam al Ghazali, a great scholar of the 5th century, a mujaddid of Islam, he says very clearly, what is tasawwuf? He said, tasawwuf shay'an. He said, tasawwuf, two things. Number one, he said, as sidqu ma Allah, that being truthful with Allah, being sincere with Allah, being truthful to the commitments, to the duties of Allah wa ta'ala, wa husnul mu'amalati ma'an naas, and being good with people. Can you imagine? Being truthful with Allah and having good relationship with people. فَكُلُّ مَنْ صَدَقَ مَعَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَأَحْسَنَ مُعَامَلَةِ الْخَلْقِ فَهُوَ سُوْهِ And then he goes, that whoever is sincere in worshiping Allah, in obeying Allah, and whoever is in the company of Allah at all times, and whoever is good with people, he is Sufi. He is known as a Sufi. كَذَا فِي خَرَاسْ التَّصَانِيْهِ And that's how he concludes by saying, this is a description of Tasawwuf, according to Imam al-Ghazali, who was a great scholar of Tasawwuf. And not only just Tasawwuf, he was a great scholar generally, a Shafi'i, Usuli, a scholar of Falsafa, whatever your name, he was an individual who was known as the Mujaddid of Qarm al Khans, the 5th century, Imam al Ghazali. That's according to his understanding, or according to him, the word, the meaning of Tasawwuf. And pretty much that's how it's taken by the majority of the scholars of Tasawwuf um, later on or around that time. So have we understood the word Tasawwuf now? Is that clear? Now some of us might say, okay, now, if Tazkiyah is mentioned in the Noble Quran, and if Ihsan is mentioned in the Hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then what's the point of talking about Tasawwuf? Why are we talk, uh, inventing a new word? Why is he that? Why do we bring a new word? Uh, a great scholar of India, uh, an Imam Sheikh Abdul Hassan Ali Nadir Rahimullah, he wrote a book, it's called Rabbani al Rabbani. The thing about Allah, like being a divine, uh, like being Rabbani, like for Allah, and not like monasticism, that you completely avoid the dunya, like the monks, they, they have nothing to do with the dunya, and they avoid the pleasure of the world. So, Imam Abu Hassan Ali al Nadu, he says, the Tazkiyah and Ihsan mentioned in the, in the Quran and prophetic narration. But when the word Tasawwuf came, this is where a lot of misunderstandings start to take place. Even though the content is same, and everybody agrees. And then he says in this book, that I wish the scholars of the latest stage didn't use the word Tasawwuf. And if they haven't used the word Tasawwuf, then probably a lot of misunderstanding would be removed by today. But however, like every knowledge, the soul has also developed to the later stage. Now, at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did we have something called Ilm al the, the, the grammar, Arabic grammar? No. Uh, at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did we have something called Ilm al-Tajweed? No, because everybody knew how to recite Quran properly. At the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did we have Ilm al-Fiqh, the knowledge of his, uh, the science of jurisprudence, the fiqh, no, all of these things, sciences came later on in the third or fourth century. And even hadith, for example, or even the compiling the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and even the ulum al-hadith, the science of hadith, these are all came to the later state. So what happened now? Scholars are saying, بعد عهد الصحابة والتابعين دخل في دين الإسلام أمم شتى وأجناس عديدة. After the time of the Sahaba companions and tabi'een. Uh, 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 a lot of people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, entered Islam. And the knowledge began to expand and extend and spread. So the scholars of Islam started to uh, expertise and be especially uh, and specialized in different different fields. So every group of the scholars, they start to write uh, their own, own sort of subject and own art. So different, different arts and subjects developed in the later state and they were not, they didn't exist at the time of the Noble Prophet Sallallahu So similarly, what we mentioned earlier, you know the Tazkiyat al-Nafs, the perfect of the soul, the, the issues of heart, for example, a'mal al-ba'tina, the, the tazkiyah, the ihsan, and uh, cleansing oneself and, and getting rid of the disease of the hearts. Who is going to do that? So the scholars of that line, al-ruhaniyah, and scholars of tarbiyah, they start to write that subject 
as in a tasawwuf and they start to come and like write the books. And then Imam al Ghazali, rahimahullah, he wrote a very important book called Al Ahya Ulul Din, reviving the knowledge of religion. And these books are a very comprehensive book, but of course it talks about uh, a lot, it talks about the inward um, uh, dimension of a human body, uh, the skirt of nafs. So this is how the knowledge of Tasawwuf developed and it became from Tazkiyah al Ihsan, later it became Tasawwuf or it is a Sufiya, or the people who practice Tasawwuf that were Sufis. But normally in our society, when people say Sufis, they kind of uh, say in a negative way. Sufi means like straight away, instantly, someone who's bad. But of course, we have to be fair and, and just when we talk about any line or any serpent. There are people on, on different levels. Just the way we find people on different levels in, in Dawah Salafiyya, in Dawah Sufiyya, in Dawah, in every circle you'll find people are on different levels. Not everyone on the same level and same degrees. And so therefore it is an injustice to really generalize the whole entire thing. Now, tell me about a talk. What's Tariqa? Have you heard of the word Tariqa? What is Tariqa? Like Tasawwuf and Sufiyya, they have different, different lines. The Tariqa. Where did they come from? Hmm. Tariqa, what's Tariqa? Brothers. Hmm? Yes, Tariqa literally is a path. Yes, it's just a, it's just a line, path. Tariqa. When the scholars of Tasawwuf, the when they speak about Tariqa, they say, a tariqa is to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to find Allah, is to attain Allah the Almighty. Right. So, a turq a sufiya hiya madaris diniya. So now, this uh, tariqa or the lines of sufis, or tasawwuf, however you want to name, uh, they are different schools uh, of purification of the souls, which normally take people and connect people to Allah wa ta wa ta and then generally they have the Senate al muttasib meaning they have the chains of narrative, chains of, they have this lineage or the chains. So for example, when you take bay'ah, when you take an oath with somebody, a scholar of spirituality, generally it goes back to his teacher, then his teacher, and then his teacher, and then it goes back to, uh, back through Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu and then it goes back to uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So generally, they have this connection uh, of, of, of tariqa. So there are some major turuq or tariqas we find in the, in the world of Tasawwuf. Can you name me some of the names of the, of the tariqa? What are the major names of ta tariqa? Or the lines of, of, of Tasawwuf? Qadiriya, yes. Qadiriya was one of them, and goes back to an imam called Imam Abdul Qadir Jilani, rahimahullah, rahimahullah, wasi'ah, a very famous uh, uh, Iraqi Hanbali scholar of Islam, Abdul Qadir Jilani. Okay, anybody else? Any other tariqa? Do we know? Naqshbandi. Naqshbandi, yes. So this is another tariqa which goes back to Imam al Naqshbandi. Any other tariqa? Chishtiya. Chishtiya. Ma'il al-Din al Chishti, and he was in the Asian subcontinent. And then we've got Suhra and then we've got different. And then in, in the Arab world, in Shadiriya and Rafa'iya, and there are different, different tariqa and different, different lines amongst the uh, school of Tasawwuf, amongst the people of Tasawwuf. What do they do? So different schools have different courses, and generally they focus, they all focus on the purification of the soul, or taking people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, meaning like teaching you and training you and giving tarbiyah to you and how you can become a true worshiper of Allah wa ta'ala, and how you can be really good to people, and how you can attain all the inner qualities that I mentioned earlier those inward qualities that sometimes we can't see. You cannot learn from the book. For example, the sincerity. How can I learn unless I go to somebody who's sincere and I'm some, someone who trains me to be sincere? So uh, these are the responsibilities of different tools or the different schools of the soul known as Qadiriya, Jishtiya, whatever you name, or, or, or Shadiriya, or, or Rifa'iya. In, in the Muslim world, they, they are actually, they exist all over the Muslim world and even in the non-Muslim world. So these are the different lines of of, of Sufiya. So different tariqa is based on different courses which leads to the wilaya of Allah Taala, as the scholars of the Sufi say. Now, what happened? What is the what what, what wrong? And where did the people of the Sufi went wrong? Where did they go wrong? We need to understand that because, like every good thing, that you can't find like a duplicate, dodgy, bad things, different coming. And we cannot blame the whole entire thing for that. 
Just because some Muslims are doing wrong things against Islam is bad. Like some, do, some people have prejudice against Islam. Just because some people are doing mistakes against Islam is bad. Now, don't forget what I mentioned earlier. Tazkiyah, Ihsan, and don't forget the soul I mentioned. There is some sort of connection, right? Um, now, where did the difference come from in the soul? So people who are against Islam, they found ways, the ways to come into these different, different lines. And they tried to act like they're Muslims and they're good people, but actually they started to deviate and teach people the wrong things, the wrong belief and wrong action. Take an example, some people are known as al Batiniya. They said, look, you know, this is called Ilm al batin you don't know, you people don't know, only the scholars, they know everything. And they won't, they won't tell you. And you can find some of this understanding and, 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 and teaching in Shia schools as well. So what they will say, like, when you go and ask them, like, what do you mean by that? They will say, this is, you don't want to understand. This is the Ilm al batin we know it. And then they want to tell everything. And this is how they bring a lot of corruption and a lot of differences and balal and khurafat to, to Islam. And this is called like Batini. And throughout the history, a lot of people came into the schools of Kasov and they kind of uh, polluted this um, teaching of, of Tazkiyah and teaching of Ihsan from the Lord of Prophet Sallallahu Some of them started to believe reincarnation. Like I have heard somebody actually speaking, and this person is from, from Bangladesh. And the guy was saying, you know what, well, I have become ilah, well, ilah, ilah. He said that Allah has come into my form. Divinity is claiming to be divine, divinity. But ilah, ilah, this is from Christianity and Hinduism. And the guy is saying, I'm the best Sufi. And then you find people like those who give the guarantees. They say, you know what, if you come to me, I'll give you Jannah. It's like you get a ticket to Jannah if you come to me. And they give you complete insurance and confirmation, and they'll take you Jannah. And so this is again uh, very strange. These beliefs came into the soul and they claim to be in the soul. Have you seen like some of you probably go to uh, uh, our countries and maybe like you know, uh, Muslim world and you find the tombs and what people are doing sometimes very funny things. Sometimes people actually go and do uh, the salah towards the cover. And I'm sure no reliable scholars of Islam would agree with that. As long as they're reliable scholars. They do and do the praying salah. And some of them actually, because due to ignorance and jahala, they're doing this, because they don't know. And others are being misguided by their leaders, unfortunately. So you see, and then people, you find that people are dancing. I've seen people dancing in such a way, it's very... Some scholars, I know some scholars, uh, that debate about like some sort of respectful dancing, uh, like movements, not dancing, sorry, movements. But I've seen like some weird dancing. Check, the, uh, check, check YouTube. And you see like what people are doing that is very, very funny. Even if you show the children, they laugh. And if, if children laugh at anything, just know it's funny. <laughs> because they will laugh unless it's really, really funny. So, um, so you see these people are like dancing and going around the circle. And then the guy starts dancing and comes to the chair and he kisses his hand and his feet and then go back again. Where did, what kind of teaching of the soul? Please are not teaching of the soul, <coughs> Allah, I mean, uh, according to all religious scholars of Islam. And then you find people, um, uh, you know, who, who take the clothes off. Have you seen the people who take the clothes off? And then they start jumping. And they say the big vicar of Allah subhanahu wa How can this be a vicar while you are, you, you took your clean clothes off? And I've heard uh, in, in some of the countries like, they say, uh, have you heard of that? Like, it's like a naked uh, uh, spiritual figure. Apparently it's a Lankafit. How can this person be free while he's, he doesn't have the clothes? The basic necessity. So we find this kind of uh, strange things in the in the in circle of Tasawwuf, or claiming to be the people of Tasawwuf. But in reality, uh, if Imam Al Ghazali was here today, he would say this is wrong. Imam Abdul Qadir Gilani was there, he would say this is wrong. All the big scholars of Tasawwuf, they were here today. If Imam Qasim Nanuti was he would say it's wrong. Ashraf Ali Tala was here, he would say it's wrong. All of them would uh, deny and reject this sort of like activities that is being done in the name of the Tasawwuf. And these actually gave a bad name to the Tasawwuf uh, uh, or to the people of Tasawwuf, I believe. And so what happened? By looking into these strange activities by some of the Sufi or those who claim to be Sufi, and I believe, in my opinion, a true Sufi individual will not say he's a Sufi. Someone who's really a person of Tasawwuf will not say I'm Sufi. Why? Because to get to the stage, really it takes a lot of hard work. It's not an easy thing. Struggle, sacrifice, of here. You have to really, you have to 
to get to that stage, you need lots of exercise and a lot of hard work. It's not easy to be just saying, you know, I, I, I'm a person of Tassol. No, true scholars of Tassol will never say that the people of Tassol. In fact, they'll deny. They'll say, I'm nothing. I don't know much. I don't worship Allah enough. That's how they would say. Even Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he encouraged that. He even said that, you know, I don't even know how to worship Allah properly. And you know how Imam Sheikh al Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, was a great scholar of Islam. And that's how they present themselves. But what happened is, later on, a lot of people in the Muslim world started to misunderstand the whole entire content and the concept of the, of the soul, and they start to reject it fully and deny it fully. Forgetting the fact that actually the content of the soul is the tasqiyat al nafs, is the purification of the soul, is al ihsan, which is mentioned in the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's very unfair to generalize anything, uh, any subject in Islam. Rather, we should remain open and be fair and um, judge everybody accordingly, every circle. Within one circle, you've got people of different levels and different understanding, and um, we should not. It's a great mistake to actually uh, generalize because we'll really be accountable in front of Allah wa ta'ala. So again, now what is Imam, uh, a great scholar uh, of India, uh, and not only just India, the Muslim world, known as Hakim al-Ummat Mawla, Shabbat ta'ala wa rahmatullah, he gives uh, again what is Tasawwuf. He says what is Tasawwuf is. Because don't forget, he was a great scholar of that line in the Asian subcontinent. He revived that, that knowledge in the Asian subcontinent. So Imam al-Shafali al-Tanabur, he said in his book, Ta'alim al-Din, with regards to rectifying the mistake, there is no need to adhere to the Sharia uh, in Tasawwuf. It is mentioned in Al-Futuhat, the haqiqah of Tasawwuf that is against the Sharia is irreligious, irreligious and rejected. Whatever is against Sharia, the teaching of Allah and the Messenger of Allah is not Tasawwuf. This is Imam al-Shafali al-Tanabur, saying. And it is also mentioned there, whoever says that he hears the path to Allah different to what Sharia has outlined, then he said, this, is, this person is lying. So sometimes, some people say like, you know, we don't need Sharia. As long as we have ma'rifah, we have the recognition of Allah, we can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they reject completely the Sharia. Some of the people are like that. And I know somebody like mentioned, and you can easily find them, a guy, he's, he claims to be the person of Tasawwuf, the spirituality. And then the guy never prays Salah. One day he was asked, why, are you, why do you pray? You say you're the, you're the biggest um, scholar and the, the, the spiritual figure. Or why, how come you don't pray? Because I'm praying in Mecca. I don't have to pray. Like he's saying in his mind, apparently he's in praise, praying in Mecca and Karala while he's here. So this kind of thing, Shabaha, you find amongst this line. And some people have mistaken. And others took it as business. You know, you see some people also, the commercial side also plays a vital role. So when you go to the Muslim world and you can find some of the tombs, do you know who control these tombs? Well, you go to these tombs and you find these tombs are controlled by some of the business people. And they are multi-millions. Don't go far, just go to Darga and see that. And you'll find people who control and those who manage and take care of Darga. These people have heard, I might be wrong, I've heard that these people are very, very rich. And some of them are not even practicing. You see, why well, they can revive this Qubur for their own benefit, for their own uh, uh, and therefore for their own business. And so business also came in, the commercial side came in. And also, there's another side to it, side to the, the, the people of the soul. So sometimes you find some of the people of the soul that they tend to deny, not maybe verbally, but in the action, deny the other aspects of Islam. Don't forget, Islam is a complete code of life, it's a comprehensive religion. It has the mu'amala, the dealing and transaction. It's got, it has the mu'asha, public relation. It has siyasa, even like how to be in the ruling position. It has all those sides. It has also defending the Muslims, right? So sometimes what happens, some of the people of the South, in some stage, they have completely rejected in the action that there's no need for the other sides of Islam. And so that's where a lot of uh, people of power used, again, some of the people of the uh, you know, for their own favor and to get things done uh, however they want to do. Now, um, Let's just see Imam, a great scholar known as Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, who many people respect and, and revere and love, and we all respect him, he was a great scholar. Right. If you look at the teaching of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and his student, Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi, have you read a book called Madarij al Salikin? Yeah? Have you read a book called Madarij al Salikin? It's a great, famous book amongst all uh, scholars and especially amongst 
the, the, the brothers who, um, who, who, who tend to follow the school of Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Taymiyyah and But the good book is really good. It's called Madari Bissariki by Ibn Taymiyyah. Do you know what this book is? Where does it come from? Actually, it's a shah. It's a commentary on a book called Manazil Sa'irin. It's a commentary of a book on a book called Manazil Sa'irin, and that's written by someone called Imam al Harawi. And Imam al Harawi was a Hanbali scholar, but also actually he had contributed to Tasawwuf. He was a known uh, in, in, in his work, and he was known for his work in the field of Tazkia, purification of the soul, and Ihsan, and, and, and Tasawwuf. And Manazil al Sa'irin, it is the book Imam al Qayyim al Jawzi, he gave a commentary, and he named it as Madar al Sa'irin. Now, everybody reads that book, but nobody denies him to say with that book. Right? But if it was, for example, written by a scholar like Abdul Qadir al Jilani, they would say, Finish, like, don't read it. And that's the end of it. Now, I mean, this is a reality that we're seeing. And we find the same thing on the other side as well. Just because it comes from the other line, we're not going to read it completely. Just, just end of it. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, in his teaching, in his books, and you find that the Tazkiyah is there, it's a lion, it's a parrot in his books. And even Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, when he spoke about the Mashaykh of Sufiyyah, you know how he used to address? Check his book on Majmu' al Majmu' al Fiqh of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. When he speaks, sorry? Majmu' al Fatawa. Yeah, Majmu' al Fatawa. When he speaks in this book, he says, Waqala Mashaykh al Sufiyyah. And then he addresses, he mentions the opinions of, of all those Mashaykh al Sufiyyah. He doesn't reject them fully. Believe me, go and check. And I have seen it with my own eyes. Uh, one of my teachers telling me, and I have seen it. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah speaks about them very beautifully and respectfully. And as I said, Ibn Jawzi, he even gave commentary of Madaj al Salikin on Manazil al Sa'irin by Imam al Harawi. I have seen some of the scholars in, the, in Egypt and in other parts of the world, and they're from different lines. So you talk about Mashaykh of Salafiyah, Mashaykh of Sufiyah. But some of the Mashaykh of Salafiyah I've seen, honestly, when I saw them, I thought that they're Sufi sheikhs. Why? Because when you look at them, they have the teachings of the Sufis. And the Sufis less, as I mentioned, because the content is one, the subject is one. There's no difference, originally. And I found some of the scholars in Egypt, they really exactly to me they were like Sufi Mashaikh. But actually they're self sure. And and again, I think there's a huge there's a knot that we need to untie a knot. Uh, and where these people are mistaken, this misunderstanding, huge misunderstandings between all lines. And there's a lot of political issues as well behind this war and battle that is taking place between all these different lines. But originally, believe me, um, the teaching of all those lines. It just the difference is some scholars would say, okay, like you, we need to do the skills of nafs, but through teaching, you go to the scholar, scholar will tell you like the Quran and Sunnah and Hadith, and he will teach you, and that's it. But other scholars will give you some of the courses. You will say, okay, do this much dhikr, do this this much Quran, do this much ibadah. He will give you some courses, and until you get to a stage where you can do a lot of ibadah by yourself, meaning he will try to take you to the unlimited ibadah, because. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuha al-ladhiya amalu dhkurullaha dhikran kathira. Or you believe, remember Allah immensely unlimited. Kathir, there's a limit to it. Allah. And to get to that stage, we need help. And the helpers are the teachers. And so, um, really, in reality, in practical life, you don't find much difference. It's just the words, just the terms, just the names. And according to Imam Ali <coughs> Ibn who really said he was a, a great scholar, and he was right when he said, I wish that you know the scholars of early state they just could keep the name Tazkiyah. And that way, nobody would say, okay, this is innovation, this is a new word, why are you using Tasawu, why are you using the Sufi? And that would just remain as it is. But I have mentioned there are differences, there are corruption, there are mistakes came in to the lines of Tasawu. And as I said, in every good action, in every good thing, you'll find bad things, people will come and pollute and try to make things wrong. And then, you know, people start judging and giving a bad name to the whole entire line or to the whole entire organization or to the whole entire da'wah itself. Spiritual figures are behind every major movement in this world. Believe me, you need we need to have spirituality, the Ruhaniya. Check the, for example, some of the major muqawma that took place, the resistance. And Amir Abdul Qadir al Jazari, who actually fought against the French invasion, was a very famous spiritual scholar, Al Amir Abdul Qadir, Al Jazayi, Al Sanusi, someone called Al Sanusi, was also a great, Umar al Mukhtar, some of the great 
I'm not actually may not be spiritual, I'm not too sure. But Sanusi was a great scholar again and, and, and a spiritual figure. Salahuddin Ayyubi was also spiritual. And even with, of course, like um, with all controversy and differences, uh, even uh, uh, Imam Hassan al Banna, who founded the, uh, the Jama'at al Khwan, he was also a spiritual individual. Look at it. He used to attend the, 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 the Adhkar and Halaqat as well. So if you go back to his history, now, as I said, with all differences and controversy, Again, you find the people behind all major movements, you find the spiritual individual, spiritual figures, because you need to have the Rohaniya. Dry people can't do much. And also, behind the spread and behind the growth and expansion of Islam, you find the scholars of Tasawuf play a vital role. And as I said, when we say Tasawuf, it doesn't go out of the fold of Islam. Now, um, someone called, uh, I'm sure you've heard someone called Shah Sha Jala, Rahimahullah. Anybody who's Bangladesh will know. Anyone outside Bangladesh will know. Shah Jala Rahmahullah was someone called Jalaluddin ibn Mahmud al Mahalli. Rahmahullah. And he came from Hadramut in Yemen to all the way through Chichadan to Silat and his family in Silat. Who was Shah Jala Rahmahullah? He was a great spiritual individual. And because of him today, we can see we're Muslims, people of Bengal. We are proud to be Muslim. Why? Because of these individuals, their sacrifice, their hard work, their da'wah, their, you know, their tabhiyah, they, they, they were, they spread all over the world. Shaykh Allah, rahimahullah, remember him. And inshallah, perhaps we can do a talk on him. I was, uh, inshallah, planning and intending to do a talk on Shaykh Allah, rahimahullah, because there's a need for the youngsters to know about Shaykh Allah, rahimahullah, because there's a huge contribution of Shaykh Allah, rahimahullah, on the Muslims of the Bay of Bindan. And you find uh, people like those uh, who spread Islam across the world, you find the people of actually Ruhaniya, the spirituality, the people, people of Akhlaq and people of uh, Tazkiyah, they're the ones who went all over the world and spread Islam. And hence you find within the Muslim world, you find uh, the public and the population of the Muslims, they have a connection with the soul or Tazkiyah somehow. Even though some of them are mistakes and some of them are right, but you find there's a connection. You go to Egypt, Morocco, Indonesia, Malaysia, <coughs> Pakistan, even in Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, it was conditioned, but there's some change. But of course, uh, it was like that as well in Saudi Arabia. So you find the reason why it happened, and it's just giving a historical uh, fact or background. The reason why you find that connection because Islam was spread through these individuals. So, uh, in my conclusion, what I want to say that the names can be different. It can be Tazkiyah, it can be Hassan, it can be Tasawwuf, it can be Sufiya, yes, but the content will remain with the content of the Quran and Sunnah of the Noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whatever you name, we must attain that quality, we must actually find Allah wa ta'ala, and we must be a true worshipper, and we must reach to that stage where he said, and Allah You can worship Allah as if you can see him, and if you can see him, Allah is watching you. We have to get to the state, by the way, because this is a, a commandment, commandment of the Noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every major mainstream religion actually aims to take us to the um, company of Allah wa wa at all times. I hear us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant us the ability to be a true, <coughs> sincere, truthful worshippers of Allah the Almighty and to understand the facts and to minimize the differences amongst the Muslims and to go back to, inshallah, the original sources whatever the names and whatever the means and whatever the circles or uh, the terms could be, but uh, ultimately we go back to uh, the teaching of Allah, the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hope the subject has been uh, uh, clear, but uh, I know it's a very profound and very complex subject. I was really fearing how I can uh, address and how I can actually talk about the subject, but possibly we have learned something to do. Jazakumullah khairam for listening attentively. Again, if I have offended anybody, uh, you know, this was my intention. I do ask forgiveness, and I ask uh, forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Forgive me for any mistake that I made, and I'm open to the guidance if there is anything which I'll have later. I'm open to the guidance. Which is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Shukran Jazeera. Jazakallah Khairan for the chef for his insightful talk on the topic of the soul. Um, I hope we have all benefited from this. Um, so now we're going to take some questions. So please raise your hands to ask any questions. Uh, this topic, yes. Yes. Feel free to ask any questions, Charlie. Uh, 
Um, I had uh, some screens which you have scholars. They go to uh, they, they go from one place to another place. Mm -hmm. So quickly, can can we, can that be helpful for the genes? Or, or okay, so you this question is about Karama. Yeah. Uh, so the brother is saying that you have the, some scholars that they can travel very quickly from one place to another place. Now Karama is uh, a, is, is, is a subject that is agreed by all the scholars of Al-Sunnah and Jama'ah. Even though some minority rejected, but the majority of the scholars accept the Karama. Karama is something that can be done by individuals who are not prophets, other than prophets, but they can do some extraordinary work which others can't do. And that's due to the spiritual power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. So that's again by the will of Allah and by the power of Allah. Now you can see, uh, in, the, in, the, in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahaba, amongst the sahaba, the karama happened, and it's all accepted. When uh, uh, Umar ibn Khattab, عنه, uh, he had guests in the Jabal. He had from far, uh, there was not any kind of media or anything at that time, and he had from really far distant part, he had uh, the other sahaba talking. So this is mentioned. And so the karama to awliya, uh, this is accepted by the majority scholars of Islam. And so therefore, some of the incidents that happen, it may be possible. We don't have to believe in that individual, <coughs> or we don't have to even say, like, it's lie or wrong, because it's possible to happen. So, exactly. And I've seen another clip, as you say, she had a program for Sufi, but they take it. And they cast the main person mm -hmm. sitting on the chair, and as soon as he touches him, Take this by like Hadouki. Yeah. <laughs> so you find this, as I said, like some of the strange things that happen, and we see this uh, in some circles. But I think mainly they go back to they go back to they go back to the lack of knowledge. I think when see a, 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 an issue like this, so scared of nafs, and an issue like that one. If there is not much knowledge, then they can go to different, different levels. And they have to be led, and they have to be really taught and educated by the scholars, the ulama. And this is the reason why, if the Sabbath is led by non scholar the soul it will give this. And I found people like that. Even within the people of those who are people of heart. You see, because the person individual is not a knowledgeable and then he starts, the shaitan comes into him. Because knowledge can only protect a person from shaitan. Because knowledge is very powerful, and this is the reason why you know knowledge really protects and, and shield is a shield of, of an individual of an army. So without knowledge, we can easily can be wrong. And so this is the reason why an army without knowledge, uh, Imam Al Ghazali Rahimahullah says, "Al ilm bil amal kal jinun." That uh, ilm, knowledge without practice is like madness. Well, amal bil ilm la yakun. He said, "And practice without knowledge is invalid. It's not going to happen." So, um, ilm comes and knowledge comes every, for everything, sharia. Of course, sharia, the soul of the skia needs to be led by and controlled by the sharia, otherwise, we'll soon go to the wrong path. And this is what happens to many people. Sometimes they're very sincere. Honestly, when you go to them, they really believe in this. But maybe they're doing the wrong things, their actions are wrong, but they're probably thinking they're doing the right things. So, therefore, the scholars' contributions are highly. And so, I think if anybody wants to go to a scholar, I mean, a uh, person of spirituality, I would say it's very important to find a scholar, a good scholar, and at the same time, he has one. So there's a less possibility of, of deviance in it. Shaka Allah. Anything else? Yeah, anything that I said like wasn't clear? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You can see that after many Islamic countries have indeed been. What do you see the practice of Tasawwuf in Middle Eastern countries, particularly in Saudi Arabia? I think uh, the, the, the moderation and the deepness happen in every place, more or less. Even in the Arab world, you find those who are doing like some weird things. So just because people are Arab doesn't mean that uh, you know uh, they're somehow you know it doesn't really the nation the, the race doesn't mean that they are somehow like more superior or better. It's about knowledge. Sometimes you find some in Arab, they're very not, like they have no knowledge. The people of uh, Jana in there as well, just like we have as well in this side and different parts of Europe and in, in Asia and in the Arab world. So it's pretty much similar. Uh, you find people of, on different levels, people on, on different, different levels.
And I say, if anybody knows Hajjul Arabic, then they should read this book on Rabbaniya, La Rabbaniya, by Sheikh Abdul Hassan Ali al Nadawi, a very moderate position. But don't forget, he was also a scholar of spirituality, Sheikh Abdul Hassan Ali al Nadawi. And of course, we find there uh, are many good scholars like you know, recently Sheikh Abdul Halim Mahmoud from Al Azhar, the great scholar of Al Azhar, ex um, uh, Sheikh Al Azhar, and also people like Sheikh Fattah Abu Ghuddah, who was a great scholar from Syria, uh, you know, a great individual. So these are the people we find, they actually try to uh, practice these lines in a very scholastic, in a very moderation, in a balanced way. Uh, and that is to be done in this uh, manner, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. Please uh, do share about this type of monthly event to brothers. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this usually takes place the first or second Sunday of the month. Um, so if you would like to contribute to the novel activities of Hal Fatah project, please do so. A bucket provided at the back. Um, Alhamdulillah, we have many members in our Dawah project and we hope to see you in our future events, inshallah. You can stay up, updated by filling in those details you, some of the brothers might have done already. Um, and uh, also follow us on social media such as like YouTube, Facebook and the Instagram. So Jazakallah Khairan for coming again and um, refreshments will be provided. But I'll ask Sheikh to do dua. Thank you for the dua. And of course, our young Mona Yaakov is also graduated. And you go, mashallah, uh, qualified shuyukh uh, as well, and, and, and brothers who are qualified. Barakallah fi kum. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami'u al-alim, wa tubalayna ya mawlana inna kanta tawwabu al-rahim. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da idha daytana wa ablana min ladunka rahma, inna ka anta al-wahab. Rabbuk fi warham, wa anta khayru rahimin. ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما والله في جيوة السنوز والله you created us, you sent us to this world you gave us everything that we need we're extremely ungrateful to you at all times so we're repenting to you tonight in this occasion forgive our sins grant us all the goodness in this world and in the next world increase our love and love all the prophets in our hearts and give us the ability to worship you though you'll be happy with us O Allah, unite the hearts of all Muslims, unite the hearts of Ummah. O Allah, raise the state of Islam and Muslim, help the Muslims across the world, all over the world, and establish your deen on this earth. O Allah, O Allah, um, uh, bestow your mercy upon the graves of all our diseased people, Mayyateen. O Allah, especially on the, on the, on the grave of our parents. Allah, Allah accept our efforts with us sincerity. Allah give, grant us the ni'mah of ikhlas and sincerity. Allah accept this, accept this event. Whoever comes and attend and contribute towards the event, grant them all the goodness in this world and in the next world. Allah accept our efforts. Allah accept the efforts of the Falaq Dawah project and all the Islamic circles and all the Islamic organizations and, uh, and lines. Allah accept the efforts and grant them and uh, grant them all the goodness, inshallah. Allah, O oh Allah, help all, all Muslims all over the world. O oh Allah, raise the status of Islam and Muslim. O Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ala Nabiyyina wa Habibina wa Shafi'ina wa Qurrat A'ayna wa Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Ali Amin.